power cable design includes several tasks. You might be interested in the cable impedance calculation and also in cable losses calculation. You might be interested in calculation of a cable insulation electric stress and in the way to reduce the electric stress in the cable insulation. And of course you might be interested in the cable temperature and mechanical stress in the cables. And all these problems, some of these problems cannot be simulated as two-dimensional and you might be interested in simulation three-dimensional problem. So during this webinar we'll, I will try to cover all these topics. Quick field geometry model, as you see it on the screen, is always plain, as the screen of the computer is the plane. But in fact, this plane model represents three-dimensional object. Depending on the model class, it could be a very long object if the model class is plane parallel. It could be some cylindrical object if the model class is axisymmetric. And it could be three-dimensional object if the model class is three-dimensional extrusion. For the cable design, you might utilize all these model classes. And we will show you on practical examples in what cases you should choose these, these, or these model class. Now the first practical problem. We have the high voltage cable designed to carry alternating current. The cable class is 110 kilovolts and the rated car load is about is 500 amperes. The cable conductor cross-section is 754 millimeters square and cable designed to carry the current at frequency of 60 hertz. The cable consists of the central conductor, the insulation of the conductor, the shield that protects the insulation from me the mechanical stresses, and the cover to insulate the shield. So the conducting materials are shown with the blue color. There are two conductors here the conductor and the shield. And white and gray are insulating materials. Our task is to calculate the cable impedance. To calculate the cable impedance you need to know the capacitance, the resistance and the inductance of the cable. So let's calculate the capacitance of the cable. There are many ways you can calculate the capacitance. For example, you can, with simulation tool, you can apply some voltage to the cable and to the shield and calculate the electric field distribution in the space surrounding the cable. Or you can calculate the charge.
in our webinar we will try to repeat the real measurement that you can do with the real cable. So to measure the capacitance of the real cable you usually use the multimeter. And the principle of the measurement is the following. The multimeter applies some current impulse, some current pulse, and measure the voltage difference at the beginning and at the ending. So let's try to repeat this experiment with quick field. We should draw the geometry model, apply some charge. This pulse means that the cable is charged. And measure the potential. I will create the problem from sketch. I create the new problem, choose the destination folder and type in the problem name. Next I should choose the problem type. To calculate the capacitance, I choose the electrostatics problem type and I should choose the model class. For this problem, I choose the plain parallel model class. This means that I will simulate the cabled cross-section. Plain parallel model class. Now I should draw the geometry model. I can draw the geometry model using quick field build geometry model editor. Or I can input the geometry model from the cut drawing. I have the cut drawing, so I will input the geometry model. Now the next step is to assign the to assign text labels to all geometric objects. This is the insulation. And this is the conductor. And this is the shield. And this is the cover. The next step is to assign physical properties to each geometric object. For the cover, I specify the electric primitivity of the material.
For the insulation, the electric permittivity of the insulation Now this is the conductor. So I mark the conductor as a floating conductor. Shield has zero potential. And here on the conductor I will place some electric charge. Now the charge value is so we repeated the real measurement experiment. We had the cable and assigned some charge. And now we would like to measure the potential difference between these two conductors. build the mesh, save all problem files, and run the simulation. Here is the field distribution in the insulation of the cable, and I would like to measure the potential difference. I build the integration contour follow to the integral and calculate the potential difference. 3.12 volts. Now if I divide the charge by the potential difference, I will find the capacitance of the cable. And this capacitance is calculated per one meter of cable length. On pictures, you may be interested in the capacitance between not only between the cable and the shield, but also between the shield and the ground surface. So in this case, if you need to measure the capacitance between the shield and the ground surface, you should draw the ground, you should add the air block, This block is air block. And you should connect the multimeter to the shielding and the other terminal to the ground. So I will remove the charge from the conductor and assign the charge to the shielding. And this is the ground surface. And for the ground surface I specify zero voltage. Now the shield is some floating conductor connected to one of the terminal of the, the multimeter and we need to estimate, to calculate the electric potential of the shield. 
and the electric potential of the ground is zero. For the air, I also specify the electric permittivity. Now let's solve the problem. Here is the electric field distribution of the cable above the air surface. And I can measure the potential difference between the earth surface and the cable shielding. So with quick field you can repeat the real measurement, the real experiment connecting the terminals to different conductors and measuring the potential difference. Now the next task is to calculate the cable resistance at direct and alternating current. Cable resistance at direct current is purely geometrical parameter. It depends on cable cross-section and on the cable length and, of course, on the material electric conductivity. Cable resistance at alternating current depends also on the frequency, because at the alternating, at the AC current, the AD currents are induced in the cable shielding and in the cable conductor and these currents affects the resistance value. Cable inductance is another parameter that you need to know to calculate the cable impedance and usually when you calculate the inductance you can also measure the cable resistance. So we will do this simple test. We will connect the current source to the cable and measure the voltage drop. This way we will calculate the resistance of the cable and their reactance. And from the reactance we can calculate the inductance of the cable. Again I will start quick field. Here is the simulation problem to calculate the cable resistance and reactance. The problem type is AC magnetics. I will simulate the alternating current in the cable and magnetic field produced by this alternating current. The model class is plane parallel. I have only the short cable of one meter length and the frequency of the current is 60 hertz.
When you're simulating AC and transient magnetics problem, you can connect the electric circuit to quick field field model. We use the electric circuit to specify the connection of the cables. So let me show you what we have in this model. We have the conductor. The insulation. The shield. And the cover. For the conductor, I specified the electric conductivity of the copper. For the shield, I specified the electric conductivity of the shield. And here is the electric circuit. I apply the test count of 1 ampere. The current flows in the cable and then returns back. Like on this scheme. And I will measure the potential difference, the voltage drop on the cable. Usually the shield also screens the cable magnetic field, but now the shield is disconnected, so it doesn't screen the magnetic field. And I should draw the air block to simulate the field propagation in the air. This is the air. Now I can build the mesh and run the simulation. This is the electric field of the cable. Again, the shield is disconnected. I can measure the current. I can measure the voltage drop. And divide voltage drop by the current and calculate the cable resistance and the cable reactance. And quick field allows you to repeat the same test with different conditions. For example, you can ground the shield on both ends, run the simulation.
you may note now that the shield screening the cable magnetic field and again you can measure the voltage drop and the impede the reactance and the resistance of the cable with the grounded shield. In power grid you usually have three cables, one cable for each phase. And you might be interested in measuring the impedance of the cables in real conditions on, on site. So next problem shows you three cables. This is the cable with the, of phase A, phase B, phase C. And this is the electric circuit. Cables are carrying current of 1000 amperes. These are connection to the ground and the shield of the cable is also connected to the ground on both ends of the cable. This is simulation of the cable on site, so here I specify the real length of the cable, one kilometer. Now let's take a look at the result. Here is the magnetic field produced by the three-phase cable system. And measuring the the voltage drop, I can find the impedance of the each cable. You can see from these results that the impedance of phases are different. Cable of the phase A carries only 188 voltage drop on the cable of the phase A is 188. At the same time voltage drop at the cable of phase B and C is about 200. 120 volts. So this system is asymmetrical. We feel a lot to quickly check this system operating mode and adjust the system parameters. For example, to reduce the asymmetry of this system, I will move the central cable. Now the cable are placed in line and I will change the cable A position so the cables now are placed in triangle. Now let's simulate this case. A 
uh, this is the magnetic field produced by the cable. And now let's take a look at the electric circuit simulation result. And check the voltage drop on each phase. You can see that moving the cable from the line to the triangle, I can reduce the phase asymmetry. Now, on each cable, the voltage drop is about 240 volts. Next case I would like to show you is the simulation of the electric field distribution in the cable insulation. When the defect occurs in the cable insulation, it distorts the electric field stress distribution and may cause the failure of the cable. Let's simulate two cases. When the defect is some conducting medium, or the defect is the air gap. This is the same geometry model, the same problem I used to calculate the capacitance of the cable. The model consists of the con conductor, insulation, shield, and the cover. You may note that for the conducting materials, I specified no radius, so we will not calculate the electric field inside the conductors. Instead, I specified the electric potential on the conductor surfaces. So the conductor has electric potential of 110 kilovolts. And the shield is grounded. It has zero electric potential. And in the insulation, I added the small defect. Now, the first case, let's let it be the air gap inside the insulation. The insulation electric permittivity is 3.4 and the insulation electric field strength, the breakdown electric field strength is about 40 kilovolts per millimeter. And the breakdown stress of the air is only 3 kilovolts per millimeter. Here are the values. For the insulation, the breakdown electric stress is 40, and for the air is only 3. Now let's simulate this case and find out the electric field stress distribution.
here you can see the electric potential lines and I will adjust the field picture and switch to the electric field stress. The maximum electric field stress is 14 megavolts per meter. 14 megavolts per meter is 14 kilovolts per millimeter. So the electric field stress is three times lower than the breakdown voltage for the insulation. But let's take a look at the air gap. Inside the air gap, the electric field stress is about 13 megavolts per meter, or this is 13 kilovolts per millimeter. And this is about four times greater than the breakdown voltage for the air. So if we will have the air gap in the insulation, the electric field stress will be greater than the breakdown voltage for the air, and we will have ionized space here and partial discharges and current flows. Now let's simulate another case. When the defect is some conducting materials. Remember, we do not calculate the electric field inside conductor, so I assign the label to the defecting block surface. This is some conductor with unknown electric potential. Now again simulate this case. Again I will switch to electric field stress distribution in the cable. In previous case, when we have the air gap in the insulation, the electric field stress inside the air gap was greater than the breakdown voltage of the air. Now the conducting material inside the insulation caused the increase of the electric field stress in the insulation. Normally, the electric field stress in this layer is about 8 megavolts per meter, or 8 kilovolts per millimeter. And with the conducting material inside, with defecting particle inside, the electric field stress is about 15 kilovolts per millimeter, twice the normal value. So with quick field you can simulate how the different defects in the insulation affects the electric field stress distribution.
Another problem with the electric field state distribution is the case when you ter terminate the cable. Normally, the electric field stress is distributed inside the insulation. But when you terminate the cable to connect it to terminals, you remove the cover, you remove the screen, you remove the insulation and connect the cable to the terminals. And in this place, high electric field stress occurs. Let me show you in quick field. This is the germ to model of the cable. Previously I used the plain parallel model class. Now I will use the axisymmetric model class. So I have the X of rotational and I can see the cable cross section. So this block is the cable conductor. This is the insulation. And this is the cover. Again, in electric problem, we do not simulate the electric field distribution inside the conductors. Instead, on the conductor surfaces, we specify the electric potential of the conductors. So for this conductor, on its surface, I specify the electric potential of 100 and 10 kilovolts. And the shield is grounded. Uh, to reduce the electric field stress in this place, Usually the stress control tube is used. So this block this block is stress control tube. Currently I labeled is, is as air. So, in fact, there is no stress control tube in this model. It's all the air. This block is air and this block is air. Now let's take a look at the simulation result. Here the electric field lines, the potential lines, and I will switch on the electric field stress. From this layer, you, you can see that the electric field stress is lower than the breakdown of the, insul of the cable main insulation. But at the same time, it is greater than the breakdown of the air outside the cable.
So here, the voltage test is about 17 kilovolts per millimeter, which is six times higher than the breakdown voltage of the air. To show you better, I will adjust the field picture. I will adjust the scale. This is the breakdown voltage for the air. Here is the conductor, conductor surface, insulation, shielding, and the cover. And in the place where the shielding is terminated, the electric field stress is very high. Now let's take a look what we can do with this trace control tube. A stress control tube is placed on the car cable termination. The tube is made of semiconducting materials, so it features some electric conductivity. And electric conductivity of the material depends on the electric field stress. So let's take a look at the simulation results with the stress control tube placed on the cable. Now I will place two simulation results close one to each other so you can compare the field pictures. I will adjust the field picture and I will adjust the scale. Now the left picture is the electric field stress distribution with stress control tube and the right picture is the electric field stress distribution with parts stress control tube. Let's take a look closer at the cable termination. Again, the red zone indicates the place where the electric field stress is above the 3 kilovolts per millimeter and which is the electric field breakdown voltage of the air. And you can see that this stress control tube the electric field stress is reduced comparing to the case without stress control tube. And let's again adjust the field picture 
and take a look at the air where this trace is above the breakdown voltage of the insulation. So again, I, I will adjust the scale. You can see nothing critical for the cable insulation in both cases. So the stress control tube allows to reduce the electric field stress in the air and at the same time it doesn't affect the electric field stress in the insulation. The electric field stress in the insulation stays on the low level. Now, the next case I would like to show you is the automatic cable design tool. Once you choose the dimensions of the cable and calculate the electric field stress, the impedance, the inductance of the cable, you may find out that the parameters the cable doesn't suit you and you need to adjust the cable cross-section, the insulation and some other parameters. To automate this task, you can use QuickField and its open object interface. You can control QuickField not only from the graphical user interface, but from other applications, because QuickField features open object interface. And now I will show you the simple case of the cable design tool. The basic geometry model is shown on your slide. The cable consists of three phase conductors and the zero conductor. The each conductor is insulated there is the filling in the cable there is the protective shielding and the outer cable insulation. How task is to calculate the cable impedance which includes inductance calculation, resistance calculation, capacitance calculation, and calculate the cable temperature and the electric, electric and mechanical stresses in the cable. To calculate all these parameters, you need to simulate electrostatic problem, magnetic problem, temperature problem and mechanical problem. Here is the word document. It's not only in the document, this document includes the tables to specify the cable dimensions and it also includes the program that will operate quick field to build the GMT model 
to run these simulations and extract the parameters such as capacitance, existence, and others. Now let me show you how it works. Here is the field. And my document that contains the program. I will press the solve button and you can see on the screen what will happen. You can see different problems are created and analyzed. The impedance the magnetic field distribution the temperature distribution the, elect the mechanical stress are calculated and all these results from electrostatic problem, from magnetostatic problem, from AC magnetics, from heat transfer, and from stress analysis, are copied to my document. So you can see the cable temperature calculated, the cable losses calculated, mechanical stresses, and other parameters. Automation Open Object Interface of QuickField allows you to include QuickField in the automated cable design system. Now let's move to the last example. Again, this is the cable termination, but now the geometry model does not allow you to use two-dimensional simulation. This cable consists of two conductors insulated. There is the screen. And our task is to calculate the electric field distribution in this case. To simulate this case, I will use the extrusion. On the right, you can see the plane model. And from this model, I will date the three-dimensional one. When you choose the problem type as three-dimensional extrusion, you can assign heights to each plane object, and this way you can construct the three-dimensional object, three-dimensional model. In plane parallel model, you have only one height for every object, and the in three-dimensional extrusion, you can assign many levels, many heights 
for each object. Now let's take a look at quick fill. I will open the problem properties. This is the electrostatic problem. I will calculate the electric field distribution in the insulation. And the model class is two-dimensional extrusion. Two-dimensional extrusion means that for each object I can assign the heights, the levels. Some objects may have multi-levels. Then, basing on these levels and these plane geometric model, the three-dimensional model is built. This is the three-dimensional model. For this object, I assign only two levels. Zero level and 80 millimeters level. For this object, I assigned three levels. Zero level, 80 level and 80 millimeters level. Thus, I have two objects here. And again, for each object, you should assign physical the label. And the physical properties. For the air, I specify the electric permittivity of the air. Now I will hide the air block. For the insulation, I specify the electric permittivity of the insulation. For the cover, I specify the electric permittivity of the cover. And for the each conductor surface, I specify the electric potential. This is the low voltage cable, so for the negative conductor, I specify minus 500 volts. And for the positive conductor, I specify plus 500 volts. I will switch on the mesh so you can see that this is truly a dimensional problem. Now let's take a look at the simulation result.
Here you can see the power map of the electric field potential. Again, I will hide the A block. And show you the electric potential distribution at the cable termination. But I'm interested in the electric field stress distribution. So I will adjust the display value. And here you can see the electric field stress distribution on the cable surface and inside the cable in the insulation. These are all examples for today of the cable, power cable design. We calculated the cable impedance, which includes the capacitance inductance and the resistance calculation. We simulated the defect in the cable insulation and calculated the electric field stress in the insulation. And we simulated the case of the cable termination with the stress control tube and saw the effects of the stress control tube on the electric field stress distribution. And we also simulated the cable with the automated cable design tool that was implemented in the Microsoft Word document. And the last example was the cable termination three-dimensional example. There are many more that you can do with quick help, but we have short time. So these are all examples for today. Thank you.